perspective, uh, just doing an overview of the TU8200, talking about the what valves and the output you can use, and also showing you how to make some adjustments. But first of all, the valves. So this one's quite clever, um, integrated amp. You can use various pentodes, 6L6GC, K KT88s, EL34s, KT66s, 6550s, so can give you varying outputs. So obviously KT88 gives you a big output, 6L6 is, is a lower output. Um, gonna take these valves out just to show the innards. So this is something you might be a bit wary of because you don't know what you're doing with the electronics. You'll be okay. All you're doing is undoing some screws and changing some jumpers. So to take out the um, smaller tubes, just grip and just rotate slowly and pop and pop. You need a bit more effort with this, so give it a rotation. You can wear gloves if you want. Pop, and again. Ooh, pop. And then we're gonna take the screws out. So first off, turn it on the side like that. So front panel needs to come off. So these are sliders, wrong screwdriver. Great. So you only need to loosen the top two. And then there's one here that you have to take out completely. And then that just slides out. Just be aware that there's fabric over the switches. It should stay on, shouldn't fall off. And now we're taking the back up, uh, the top case off. So turn it around. So you've got three here. Obviously when you're doing this, don't have it plugged in. So you've got one, two, three, four. Boom, all the screws are out, put it down, and then this just lifts up. Careful, don't just yank it up because you might have some wires like this that are coming up. So pop that down there. So, adjustments, what can you adjust? First one, very simple, is the, let's use this as a pointer, paintbrush. So you can see here, you've got, it's labeled LED color. So this is the LED, which just um, shines when you switch, up, switch on the amp. So there's three, these are jumpers here. So you've got three settings, red, blue, green. It's currently set at green. So when you switch on, that will go green. Okay, so we don't want green, we want red. So pull the jumper out. Sorry, there's a jumper, you need to a good look at that. So the way the jumpers work, see the bit at the top, slightly, it's not straight at the top. That is the top part, okay? And then if you see through the top, you've got a line, you want the, the pins going through with the opening. You'll, you'll get it once you start messing about. So red one, we're gonna go for a red one. So like that, and then just slowly just push it in. So it's, all this jumper's doing is connecting these two connections together. So it's now on red. I'm gonna set it back to green. 
because I always think green is like on, go. Up to you though. Um, the second one is the configuration of the output tubes. So this is JP2 and JP1 here. See, one for each channel. So at the moment, it's connected under UL. So UL stands for ultra linear. So with regard to output, there's three settings here. You've got pentode, ultra linear, triode. Pentode gives you the biggest output. Then it's ultra linear and then it's triode. So if you want the maximum output of you from your valve, put them on pentode. If you want a slightly cleaner sound, ultra linear. The best sound is triode mode. So this is basically connecting internal grids with uh, connectors together for a for triode. So if you're not really bothered, you feel like you've got plenty of volume, just put it on triode mode. I have these set at ultra linear. So, so for this one, you need to have them both the same. You can't just have one on ultra linear and one on pentode. It's not, not great. So I'm just going to pull the ultra linear one out like that. Okay, make sure the kind of castle headed bit is at the top, like that. And then I'm gonna change it to triode and then put it on and then push. And you can feel the contact being made of the two bins. So just gonna put it back to ultralinear. Oh. And push. Cool, so they're both set to ultra linear. That's how it, how it is, this one. Right, so that's how it works. Now, you have got a phono, let me see here. You have got a 6.3 stereo jack for those who use their headphones. Now, internally, there is a um, jumper for the actual output of the 6.3 jack. Now I've set it to low, which is plenty. So if you want to change that, you're gonna to have to take this board out, okay? So three screws, that one, that one, and that one. I'll, I'll just do it quickly, just to show you. I mean, you don't really need to do this. I don't know whether people generally listen to headphones with this. So you know, I just leave it, see how you find it. If you feel like you need a bit more output, then change it. That's it, and then you just lift it up. So it slides over there, boom, okay. So this exposes the phono level here. Okay, so at the moment it's low. You've got mid and high, so if you've got some uh, some headphones that need a bit more juice, you put it to high. I, I've, left it, I've left it at low. Same principle as before, pull it out. Okay, make sure the castle bit's at the top and then push it down. So it's now on mid, but I'm gonna put it back to low. Cool, so that's that. And then fit the bit on top. Watch your wires, make sure they're not, you're not trapping anything, but the main, thing is to get that phono board, the, the board that holds the volume control all lined up. So just a quick note, something that I just did incorrectly. So you, you've got the two boards like that. They're gonna be coming together. So see these contacts here and this here, these have to go into the holes. If they don't, you won't get any output at all. It won't cause any problems, but you just won't hear anything. So line it up. You have to be at this angle and make sure those pins go in the holes. Yep, that's it. So that's flush, so you know that that's the case. That's it. And there you go. When I do this, I just put them in lo loosely just to get them all lined up. Oh, I didn't go in. Down there. 
Now that they're all good, I'm going to screw them tight. Right, and then I'm going to put the lid on. Just slides in over the top. Just make sure you haven't trapped any wires. No, superb. Then I'm going to do all the screws up. Again, I'll just, just do it loosely to begin with. tight and then you want the front panel oops see I've got a wire trap there that I could see so that is not good but I've moved it so you do the ones at the bottom So I'm going to tighten them all up. Then we're going to put the front panel on. So before you put the front panel, give it a shake so the washers fall near the head. Okay. Make sure we get it the right way around. So they will slide on like so. Cool. And I'm going to put the extra screw in, which is here. You could actually leave this one in. Anyway. Bro, I'm going to put the valves back in. Make sure they're lined up. Push down. They're going really easy, easily. Push down, and then these. Make sure the spigot has a key that lines up with that. Pro tape, push down, spigot lined up. Pro tape, push down. Right, ready to rock and roll. Just before I sign off, I want to say a big thank you for watching our videos. Like and subscribe, and follow us on all the social network platforms. See you later.